welcome to the Sports Editor. So great to have uh, Robbie and Joe join us who run the lovely program the SA Wild Dogs. Guys, welcome to the show. So good to, to chat to you. Thanks, Ron. Yeah, and you, man. Happy to be yeah, here. Yeah, thanks, Ron. Yeah, thanks for having us, man. It's an honor. Pleasure. Honor to join you. Thank you. Pleasure. Uh, let's get the, I think, the most important question out the way. SA Wild Dogs, um, how did the name come about? What are you guys? Are you, what, what's, your, what's your mission? What are you on about? Tough question. I mean, the, the name, the name's an easy one. Uh, you know, the, the name actually dates back to, um, you know, back to 2010. We actually took a team uh, to a tournament in Lignano, Italy. Uh, we named them the SA Wild Dogs back then. And uh, we kind of thought the name was appropriate just because the, the SA Wild Dog or the Lycon Pictus um, African Wild Dog Painted Wolf, you know, it goes by many names. They're highly, highly, highly social animals. Um, who, you know, form strong bonds, hunt in large packs and, uh, you know, are one of Africa's fiercest and most successful predators, which I think sums us up quite well. So the name, the, the name we think is an appropriate one. Um, and obviously the SA part st actually stands for Southern African rather than South African. Okay. Um, I'm made up of, you know, a lot of South Africans, a lot of Zimbabweans. Um, I mean, Robbie can tell you, we, today we, we actually have a number of nations, including the home nations over here in the UK. We've got a Kiwi, Kiwi, uh, a token Kiwi, token Aussie. Um, so we've got them all now, but it originated as a Southern African team, hence the SA. Um, right. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah sorry, Karen. Yeah, I know. And then, uh, obviously, how we started was, um, uh, you know, post that tournament in 2010, in 2017, a few of us older buggers, um, reaching the, the <laughs> end of our rugby playing days, uh, decided to go back and compete in that tournament for one last hoorah, um, leave it all out on the sand type thing. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we were fairly competitive on the field, um, pretty popular off the field with the locals. And I think we all just got the bug um, again. I thought, you know, that was something incredibly special. And, uh, when we got back, Robbie and myself sat down and we thought, you know, this could be something pretty special. How do we, you know, how do we do this, you know, in a better way? And uh, we, we sat down and we had a chat and we decided we wanted to create a, a team that kind of guys could feel welcome, you know, especially expats living abroad, mm. uh, living in the UK. How do we create a, a place that makes them feel welcome, um, you know, create that brotherhood and, and go and do it all over again. And we went from, you know, that one team in, in 2017 to last year, um, I think we had about 119 players take the field in 11 tournaments in seven different countries. So sure. you know, we've, we've grown very now, quickly. That was our third year, right? So and that was our third year, yeah. So it was only 28 and then we just kind of shot yeah. up you know, 100 and, you know, 119 or 128 or so, somewhere there, yeah. Sure. Yeah. And I think today, I think over 200 players have actually pulled on the jersey for the Wild Dogs. Wow all tournaments since it started in 2017 so it's been fantastic it really has i think it it's grown bigger and has been more special than robbie and i could have imagined yeah for sure yeah. very true well, well i think what what helps is that the name's actually extremely catchy wild dog so it almost like it, this is going to be interesting this is really going to be something fun and exciting at the same time and i think you you guys are got a brilliant name there it's absolutely fantastic yeah it's a good thing you've got going there cheers man appreciate that yeah. That's because obviously what's also interesting is your, your jersey designs are quite unique and then each player sort of like has a nickname on the back there, am I right? So what is the thinking behind that? Yeah, so so um, the jersey designs, I mean, um, obviously our heritage is a, is a big part of who we are as a team and, uh, you know, all of us Africans, we we know, we love the, the beautiful striking colours and the colourful dress that you see throughout the continent and we kind of like, we felt... We needed to showcase that. Um, so we've looked at, you know, looked at a number of different travel designs. Um, probably need to give a shout out to Jared, who's, he's got, he's got the eye for these things. He's been a really big behind the design of the actual jerseys. Um, I'm you know, not paying to say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've <a> good money. <laughs> uh, so so in, in, in our first year, we, um, we had a, a dashiki design, which is, sort of more West African. Um, and then, you know, from there, when, when we decided to kind of grow this, we wanted to go a bit back to, you know, I guess our roots as, as South Africans. And, you know, we've become really well-known for our Indabele patterns on the jersey, you know, the bright 
colors, the, uh, the geometric pa uh, patterns. Um, you know, actually, our kit this year, um, obviously with tournaments not happening, they've done a couple of these fundraisers, uh, virtual tournaments, and um, our kit raised the most money and was given the sure. award, which is pretty cool. Um, and I guess the, the nicknames, you know, I think in the first year we had just our names on the back. And then we thought, obviously, as you're growing a community, you know, what are the things that we know we love? What's fun? So, you know, we've got everything from your bra to lacquer to, uh, you know, to right to our vets jerseys and our vets jerseys, the, the Lumo kit, they have more of the, you know, dop, bubble us. Bubble us. Yeah. <laughs> The more appropriate names. So. Yeah. Um, so, and I think what what have we got now? Like four different. Well, this year we were supposed to have four different kits. Um, yeah. Uh, we, yeah, I was supposed to kind of pull on a, a new color this year, which we which we won't go into yet. Um, and hopefully, hopefully we'll we'll have a next year. But um, sure. Yeah. Very exciting. Starting stuff. That's brilliant. Um, and just in terms of, of numbers, do you guys mainly focus on sevens and tens? Um, and in which competitions do you guys get and participate in? I'll let you go. Uh, yeah, I mean, it all started with beach rugby. Um, and then obviously, a lot of the boys having played sevens previously, uh, we decided to venture out into the different formats. So we now do beach rugby, sevens. Uh, we had our first outing at tens this year, earlier this year. Um, we'll have tag rugby next year and hopefully a few different formats of the game, possibly maybe even a ladies team in the future. Um, it's all part of the kind of big plan. Um, and then as for tournaments, uh, wherever guys want to go. So, you know, we're always open to suggestions. Um, we play around Europe. I'm sure Robbie um, will come on, come on to a few of them, but, you know, Portugal, Barcelona. Uh, we went out to Lignano, The Hague. Hopefully travel out to Dubai later this year. Cape Town 10s earlier this year. So, yeah, wherever the guys really want to go, we'll look at those tournaments and we'll see if it's feasible and if we can get the teams there. Um, and we'll go do it. Yeah, we're up for... There's a few big ones that we still really want to do. Um, the like of Amsterdam 7s, Dubai 7s. So, yeah, all on the roadmap. I, I think uh, I think Jared and I get carried away a bit because, um, <laughs> you know, our, our second year was sort of the, the growing year where it was mainly beach rugby focused. And uh, I think we, we had Bournemouth 7s and, and one other sevens tournament so it was sevens was just the side to the, the beach rugby and now sevens has kind of grown um then last year how many i think we we did 11 tournaments and had tournaments, about 16 yeah. teams or something like that and we said you know 11 tournaments we can't That's do more it. than that yeah. you know it, it's tough just the two of us <laughs> and then it got to to this year and we'd signed up for how many you, you 20, just get 21 tournaments yeah Right. 21 right. tournaments we had signed up for this year so yeah wow. we, we keep on we keep yeah. on doing it uh, we keep on telling ourselves to stop um, <laughs> someone will suggest another great tournament and it's hard to say no yeah it is like you know obviously these tournaments in different places you hear about the amazing ones we you know now we're getting a lot of the organizers coming to us because we often bring multiple teams so yeah, it's easy to get overexcited and, until you realize like every weekend for the next <laughs> for, like, three months. Of summer, yeah. but we love it. That's brilliant. So, um, and obviously you mentioned that you've got quite a few expats. So obviously, you know, they're South African stuff. Of course, they're good at rugby. Um, have you guys won any competitions or you're sort of aiming to, to win a few? Any that have stood out for you where you thought, wow, that was, that was a tournament to remember? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, you know, we, we definitely started off just, you know, happy to be at the tournament and, you know, compete if we can. It was more about, you know, the coming together and the brotherhood and the family feeling. I do so think that you say we are very good at rugby. Was, I do think we always, you know, you go to a tournament, you're, gonna, you're South African, you're competitive, you, you're going to want to win. But, uh, you know, obviously it started out was just the fun of yeah. being yeah. Yeah. No, Now we obviously aim to win all of them, you know. But, um, <laughs> We, we certainly give it a crack. We've been very fortunate. We have won three of three of them in the last two years. So we we won the uh, men's open at the Kinsale Sevens in in Ireland last year. Um, we also won the men's open at the Summer Social Sevens in in the UK. And then earlier this year, before lockdown, um, we we're very fortunate to uh, head back to Cape Town 
for our first tens experience and walked away as champions. So yeah, it was. Sure. It's been. Yeah. Uh, we we're hoping to get a few more this year, but uh, obviously. Yeah. yeah we, we, we've we we've wished. you know made a made a couple finals as well. Uh, you know, I think I think there was a stage last year where. I think every tournament we played in, we made the semis or at least as uh, yeah. you know, the third, fourth. And there was there's maybe one one where we didn't. So we've been really competitive. And beach rugby is also um, is quite a it's quite a different sport to your sevens. And um, when we're playing teams from France and Spain, from Italy that that just do this all the time. We kind of take a team that ha- doesn't know each other, uh, you know, for the most part. Now, obviously, we're growing to know each other a lot more. But having practiced on sand, we got there and we always extremely competitive. And, you know, they love us out there because of how physical we are. Um, and we, we've gotten better, you know, at every tournament. Last year, we, we actually drew. So in beach rugby, you, you have to have a winner. So we drew with the Russian team who were the world champs. Uh, at full time in uh, Marseille, and then unfortunately lost them in the, in the what golden try kind of golden try scenario. Oh yeah. my word! And uh, it, it's a it's quite frustrating this year because we had probably the strongest squads uh, you know we would have ever taken to each of the tournaments that um, we were playing in this year. Um, so frustrating with what's happening, but uh, yeah, exciting at the same time because we know we're just growing and. Um, yeah, yeah. It's starting to compete on all levels, which is great. So, yeah, um, every, every tournament we go to now, where um, you know we're certainly up there with the shot, uh, with the best of them. Um, even on the seven circuits now, branching into the elite, into the elite side of things, which we had a, a taste of last year, making a final. Uh, we now know we can play at that level as well. So, like Robbie said, taking taking a few teams to every tournament is great. So we've got mm-hmm. you know. The very social boys who you know love to have a beer instead of the water at half time. You know we've got guys who take it you know semi seriously in the open and yeah. want to push. And then the boys who are there to win trophies. So we've got a great mix from the teams that we take with. That's fantastic. But I, I give you guys so much credit because I don't know how on earth you can play rugby on the beach and you try and run on that sand for two minutes. You're done. So <laughs> that's that's a serious effort to play rugby on the beach. Two minutes is a long time, hey. I'm telling you, yeah. forty seconds and you're. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think our fittest player probably just about makes that two-minute mark. Yeah. It's an incredibly long time on the sand. So, uh, sure. I think, I mean, my, myself and Robbie, you know, we were in a few of the beach rugby squads. I don't think we'd make any any of them now. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty difficult. Uh, it's excellent. And um, because you both touched on, on, on Europe a bit. And obviously, I mean, that's such a draw card for a lot of players. You know, you get to see a bit of Europe. Um, but then how does one sort of manage the time? I'll obviously, I assume these events are all the weekend. Um, do the players secure sponsorships? Um, are you guys looking for people to support you? How does one sort of make it possible to attend all these fantastic festivals? Um, well, I mean, at, at the moment, we have some fantastic sponsors, you know, um, who, who support us. Um, you know, unfortunately, that doesn't really go far towards tournaments and that that's you know more kit and yeah really just kit and you know as we've been building up like the gazebo and all these things take um, take a lot of money so between Borky and I um, we actually we fit the bill for ourselves and and all the guys do for themselves it's kind of a you know you want to play for the Bears and you want to get out there and, and everyone pays their own way you know maybe at some stage th- that'll change but um, you know, so that's also why we have such a variance in squads. You know, you get um, one week uh, to the next, you, you might, out of a squad of 12, you'll probably have like between seven and 10 new guys. Um, so, so we're building to that stage where now we've got like a really, really big squad. So that's why this year um, we had extremely packed squads and we had a couple of boys that are playing in France at, at, at a really good level. Uh, Spa actually, who you, who you've chatted to, um, <laughs> yeah. Dube, uh, yeah. you know, I love he that was, he was representing with the SA wild dogs. <laughs> <Dube>. <laughs> <Love> yeah. <it. laughs> um, yeah. So, so we've got some key lads and, and they were going to pretty much do all of them. So you, we, this year we're going to have like a core group and then guys kind of coming in and joining often doing, two weeks in a row. So 
Uh, you know, like I think it was Marseille, then, then Lignano, and you'd get the boys, like a lot of the guys who are going to Marseille, oh, okay. France, going across to Lignano the next week. Um, so trying to get it like that, some guys flying and, and, and out for one, but yeah, it's, it's kind of each, you know, everyone plays their own way and uh, you do it because you're going to have, you know, you're going to have an absolutely cracking weekend with yeah. your mates, play some awesome rugby and, you know, party hard on the Sunday, you know, hopefully after doing incredibly well. So that's because about to ask, I'm sure everyone must be in the absolute best behavior when they join the Wild Dogs. Is that like a criteria to be part of the team? <laughs> uh, that's what probably divide opinions uh, out of our management group. But uh, from us, it's a, it's a definite yes. Um, you know, I think, uh, and to be fair, I think what, what's more important than the guys being on the best behavior, because they have been um, and they are, and uh, I think the proof has been there through all the tournaments that we've been going to throughout the UK and Europe. Uh, but I think what's more important is that Robbie and myself and the rest of the management team kind of really, you know, teach or, or update or bring any new players in and, and teach them, obviously, the history of our, you know, our club so far, um, the value of the team and, you know, what we're aiming for, what the end goal is. And once they understand that, by the time they put on the jersey, they kind of know how to, how to conduct themselves. Um, and I think that's what we've become fairly well known for is that team that, you know, is, is extremely competitive off the field. But I, I'd like to think that we are the good guys off the field as well. Um, still having fun, you know, still that Sunday night's still great, but uh, we don't take it to the next level. But yeah, no, the boys have behaved really well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Badge well. Yeah. Um, just, just to hmm. kind of add to that, I think, um, I don't know if you uh, actually can see it on my shoulder here. So we have the hashtag Ubuntu. Okay. Um, all of our all of our kids yeah. and that's kind of one of one of our values or one of the things you know we stand for um mm. ubuntu the nguni bantu term meaning humanity um and basically so reading reading it off here yeah, is you know it's often translated as i am because we are or humanity towards others you know and we try we try to be like that and you know in the tournaments uh, it's it's uh, about the entire group it's how we yeah. act towards other people um and i i think that's had a major part in why we have grown uh, so quickly because you know after every tournament we often get guys approaching us and what's why our um the home nations the english and uh, group has grown so much because guys see us at tournaments and they see how we conduct ourselves and how uh you know how we act and and they want to be a part of that um so I guess yeah, we 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 want we want good guys um, mm. because whether it be a fine session or just a, a, um, a kind of a normal team run or anything, we want everyone to feel welcome. You know, at, at our fine sessions, we welcome you know mothers, uh, girlfriends, wives. You know, we want kids to be able there. We don't want it to be a a, a lad 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 culture. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's all good. Dying to ask you guys this question. Do you have a theme song? And why I ask it? Because, I mean, there's two songs that come to my mind. Is it Duran Duran Wild Boys? Or that Wild Thing? <laughs> you know, you know, <coughs> it has to be one of those two songs. <laughs> um, so, so, not necessarily a, a theme song as uh, such. You know, I think in, in a usual rugby spirit, uh, there's definitely sing alongs. And you know all all the the good stuff that. Any we'll, singing and dancing, yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially after a couple of took at our fine session. Um, <laughs> so, but that was a smooth know, punch, Robert. That was smooth. <laughs> Dropping in the sponsor's name. Very. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but we do have um, a, a a war cry, um, which. Yeah, I think, was it from the first tournament, eh, Doc did the... Yeah, very first tournament, yeah. So, um, you know, after after our last game, you know, whether it's after our last game with the opposition, we get everyone together, or just us afterwards, fine session, uh, we have a, this war cry. And um, it's it's very similar in, as in, as the series one, the uh, uh, Ricky Tiki Tonga one. Okay. Um, which is... You know, it's quite fun to get everyone together. and Yeah. But we do actually want to bring in some kind of theme, theme tune, or not theme tune, but like <laughs> there's, there's, there's things on the horizon there, you know, like some traditions. We're obviously still quite a young club. Uh, so there's a couple of things we do want to bring in. 
But you know, just, just from what you guys are talking, and it, it, I can really see you guys have got the right approach in the sense that you've got culture going already, there's discipline, there's a fantastic vibe, there's expectation, but in a good way. And that's just sort of building up towards something fantastic, guys, because you sort of nailed down all those essential things first, and then just slowly but surely, it's, it's going it's gonna to grow. So, well done, that's a fantastic approach you guys have got going there. Yes, cheers. Yes, man. Right. And, and what, what would you think would be key for you to guys to grow your brand now? Like, what could people perhaps do? How can, how can we help you grow your, your name and get go, bigger out there? Yeah, I, th I think it's just a, a word of mouth, really. I mean, we, we fairly, oh, it's fairly, we're pretty active on social media. So, you know, if anyone wants to give us a follow on our Instagram or Facebook or Twitter account or even regularly check, you know, updates and fixtures through our websites. Um, you know, we, we send out regular posts. Um, we'll be getting newsletters out hopefully later this year as well, just to keep, you know, any supporters that want to come down and support us updated with uh, any news. Um, but it's just, yeah, anyone who, who has a love for rugby, whether they be South Africans and Bobrian, you know, British, um, you know, anyone's welcome if they want to pop down and have a chat at any of the tournaments or even, at, you know, the local pig and whistle. So, yeah, I can also do it, Robert. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's just really word of mouth. Um, you know, it would, would be great for us. We, we I mean, the, the word Robbie uses is, you know, organic growth, which is great. You know, we yeah. got to... we. We didn't want to get to a point where we, you know, outgrew what we stand for, um, oh, yes. of, you know, uncontrollable. But we've realized, you know, even with 200 players having pulled on the jersey, the culture of the team's still there. So I think no matter how big we grow, the culture seems to have, you know, settled already, even over the last two and a half, three years. Mm. Hey, I mean, question, sorry, go ahead, Robbie. No, no, I was just going to say, like, you know, in terms of support, um, you know, we, we, we obviously have the support of our, of our pack and that's, we kind of lean on the players, you know, whether it be to, uh, you know, help one another or um, help, help us really, you know, we've, one of the things I think that's, that's really great is we, through social media or even like LinkedIn, you know, we've got quite a, a lot of connections just through what we're growing. So, um, you know, whether we, we, we've posted like on, on LinkedIn a couple of times whether to help a guy in his rugby career or, or um, Find work. finding a job, you know, especially in what's happening mm. at the moment. I think that's going to be even bigger going forward. So, you know, how, if, how can people help us is, is just word of mouth, you know, spread. If, if we're pushing something or trying to help a guy out, just help by sharing it. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, it's growing a network, thing. isn't it, of like-minded people. Yeah, That's what yeah, it's exactly. essentially about, um, yeah. And the same for, for sponsors, you know. Um, everyone's going through a tough time at the moment. So I think, you know, we, we just want to help our sponsors by, you know, when the pig finally opens, we're going to make sure we, we get down there. Uh, you know, <laughs> on the weekend, they, they were serving beer and guys are down there having some booty rolls yeah. outside. And yeah. um, Uncle Beef, uh, you know, the guys have been every two weeks. We we make sure we get a lack of delivery of billies and some some amazing steak. They saw some great meat from uh, Scotland, and um, yeah, so it's really really supporting um, mm. our, the guys who support us. Really, yeah. Ah, that's great. Yeah, and again, that's what makes you guys unique. You in it to support everyone, and that's why it's so special. So well done, guys. That's excellent. I just want to touch. You mentioned fixtures earlier, um, Jared. And I think this is why sevens rugby and tens rugby is growing so nicely. Is it because of this factor, the, the camaraderie, you know, you can have a good time. It's festive. It's lovely. And although you guys are heavily involved in it, so your opinion might be a bit biased, but that's fine. There is this format growing in the right pace or is it growing possibly too quickly? Sevens rugby that is. Well, I, I think it's definitely growing at the right pace. I mean, it's, yes, it's, you know, it's gaining traction. You can just see it by even the fans, the support from the fans, at, you know, on the, on the circuits, on the international seventh circuit. We can certainly see throughout the UK that, you know, there's almost a sevens tournament, you know, from beginning of April to September time. So every weekend there's, there's a sevens tournament happening somewhere throughout Europe. So, mm -hmm. um, the players love it. It's a great game for the fans because the rugby's quick. Um, it's entertaining. Um, 
yeah, I don't think it'll stop. I mean, I think as, you know, the smaller nations are, are playing catch up um, on the international circuit, it's just growing it even more as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's on the right trajectory. Um, that's brilliant. <laughs> and it won't get boring, that's for sure. Yes, yeah. no, for sure, for sure. Well, guys, um, you know, and uh, like you said, it's, it's been a bit of an interesting time. Um, but have you guys been able to, well, let me uh, rephrase that, sorry. How does your sort of training program work? Do you guys get together once a week, twice a week, or the guys do their own thing? I know you mentioned that sometimes the guys meet up in different countries for different tournaments. But how do you train as a squad? Do you want me to go with this? Jay? Yeah, go for it, Pop. Um, so, so, of course, because our guys are based all over, um, it's kind of hard to do training sessions. So we are, we are kind of unique in that, you know, for the most part, we, we're turning up to a tournament and, and getting to know each other from a rugby standpoint then, then and there. Um, you know, of course, we kind of try to bring in certain structures, which is explained at the start, um, and, and the way we play. Um, this year, we, we were organizing a sort of a big camp, uh, which was which kind of fell through, not necessarily because of COVID, just um, time-wise. Um, but but that's definitely a plan. You know, we want we want to do something either the end of this year or kind of beginning of next, where we get all the guys together. Because whilst a lot of them have met each other throughout tournaments, you know, there's nothing like bonding in, in one big session. You know, getting to know what structures we want to put into place, how we're going to play, um, our values. You know, kind of get that message across again, and and then have a big social afterwards and get to know each other. Mm. So, yeah, we, we do play touch. The guys who are based in London, we do like okay, a okay. touch session kind of. I've, I've got a good idea for a camp. Come not, to Cape Camp. <laughs> Just come What's to Cape Town. What's that? Come to Cape Town. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a great shop. Sounds yeah. like a great camp. I'm in. I'm in. There we go. Done. Easy as that. Um, so, should I wrap it around here? So, when is it like the big sevens, international sevens, the guys are doing their thing here? Yeah? Are you guys playing at the same time, the weekends? Uh... So, so I, I think, yeah, we are. You know, um, most of, even like when the one um, happens at Twickenham here, there's uh, usually the summer social is on the same weekend. So, okay. we, uh, we, yeah, generally out doing doing that, not at Twickenham getting <laughs> having many pints. Um, <laughs> so, but you know, where where possible, uh, guys are generally watching on TV, and uh, um, obviously a lot of banter goes between the group and stuff like that. Um, guys, I should have asked this question a bit earlier. Sorry, it slipped my mind. Um, you guys have actually been very good in helping others, and I know you touched on it briefly about supporting each other. Uh, but you, have, you guys have been involved in sort of community building and assisting others in this, this time. Have you done anything s specific at all? Yeah. Um, so so um, we, we often, you know, we help out um, players and stuff where they have their, their charities or when, when they're doing something. Um, you know, obviously our sponsors often uh, have charity events uh, where, where we're involved in. Um, you know, this last one at the Pig and Whistle, they have this uh, an amazing pig races where uh, these little mechanical pigs run. And <laughs> oh, I heard you wrong. I thought you said yeah, pig races. <laughs> yeah, not, not, not real pigs. It's, it's yeah, we, you really have to explain that one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, and last year they did it for sort of uh, for our chosen charity, which is uh, the Bokomosa Education Trust. Um, so it's, it's a charity that Jared and I are quite close to. Um, you know, uh, we're on the board of the, that charity in, over here in the UK, and it's it is a really amazing charity. It's um, sort of it's dedicated to providing you know education to South African children in need, um, and it's it's not one of these big powerhouses that have buildings here in in central London, and only a little bit of the money donated goes towards the charity. You know, most of the money goes towards the kids. Um, in last year, in 2019, we raised just under five thousand sure. pounds. Um, not sure what that is in rands. Yeah, it's the money. Um, you know, earlier this year, we had kind of had to think out the box. Um, uh, what can you do in, in lockdown? So we did a, a PlayStation 24-hour um, event with two of our guys had uh, were on, and uh, what was quite cool is uh, we we wanted to raise five hundred quid and. 
I think there was an hour to go and we were on 700 and we said, boys, will you push through if we can get to the thousand? And they said, yes. And uh, sure. so they stuck on for a couple more hours and, and it, I think it's now sitting at 1,200 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Anything else to add to Jared? On, uh, no, I think you, I think you got all of it. I think it's, yeah. you know, in charities, obviously, Bocamoso is, is, you know, the charity, our chosen or selected charity that we support through the SA Wild Dogs. Uh, but like Robbie said, you know, the guys are often taking part in, you know, charities of their choice where we'll send a mass, you know, message out to our group, um, you know, with the pack ever growing and, and they, they get a lot of support from all their brothers, which is, which is great. So, yeah. mm, Excellent. Guys, as we, we draw towards an end, um, rugby, you as a sort of world perspective, um, obviously you guys followed quite a lot. I think it's in good hands. Um, British and Irish Lions tour, hopefully that, that goes ahead. <laughs> I think we all can't wait. But generally speaking, <laughs> <laughs> um, do you feel rugby's in a good place at the moment? Yeah, it's, it's tricky. I mean, I know some domestic leagues are, are struggling, you know, around the world. Um, I mean, even, even our own, you know, South African franchises seem to not be pulling the crowds that they once did. But, um, yeah, I don't think it's a sport that will ever die out just because, you know, there's so many rugby players around the, you know, around the globe that it's got to come up again at some point. I just think there needs to be an introduction of maybe something new, something to shake things up. Mm. Um, a new league or, you know, I wouldn't say too many changes to the format of the game because we're already seeing that creep in, which a lot of players aren't enjoying. Um, but, yeah, I think on a global level, you know, between the... the I mean, sevens is on the up. We can see tens is rising. Um, tag rugby is doing incredibly well. So I don't see any reason why 15s will also just come back strong. That's true. That's very, very true. Yeah, and I want to know your thoughts, Rob. Eh? <laughs> I want to uh, know what the head tilt was for. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's just, it, it just is sad to see things like, you know, I remember I would try to watch the Sharks, come on the Sharkies, uh, you know, every... You know, every every time possible, every weekend possible, and now, you know, I don't even know the results unless my pops rings and tells me. Um, and it it's kind of sad, you know, like things like the Curry Cup, which was just so huge, and what what I grew up on. Um, you know, I think Super Rugby almost killed that by by making everyone play each other within um, South Africa when it only really suited the Aussies to try build their local league when we already had Curry Cup in that. So I guess I'm just talking South Africa rugby here, but, you know, I find that sad. You know, I went to university in Pretoria. The, that state, Loftus was packed. Now Loftus doesn't get any crowds. So something definitely does need to change, um, whether, whether it means some of the South African teams join over here or with the Super Rugby goes back to its old roots or... You know, I don't know. I don't have these answers, but I, I think that there's something there. It's great to see sevens growing, and I think it will grow. Shorter versions of the game. You look at, I mean, you look at cricket and how 2020s taken off. There's, I think, these things are are, are good and and growing. I'll make a bold prediction, and if I get it right, you guys owe me a cap. Yeah, sure, of course. <laughs> uh, no, I agree with you, Robbie, and uh, I reckon all the South African sides are going to be like in the Pro 14 setup. So you'll actually have almost two groups because Super Rugby is basically, if you take the South African sides out of Super Rugby, that's basically your money, everything gone. So Super Rugby pretty much comes to a standstill unless they do their own thing down there. Um, and it's, it's jolly good rugby. Gee was you, you play in the Pro 14 and you, as the top two, I think they go up to the European Championship. Those are the top three, I can't quite remember. But I mean, then, then again, you, you're playing against even... Big eight clubs. So, I mean, why wouldn't yeah. you? And it's, it's just, yeah. you fly to you England, you fly to... Um, yeah, time zone is not, not an issue. Yeah. Exactly. It, it makes sense. I mean, it would be the logical next step. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm looking yeah. forward to the cap. I mean, rugby in France is still, is still uh, going like, really well. And they, they pull big crowds. So, you know, if, the, if you come and say the top of whatever the Pro 14 becomes and you head across to Europe, I mean, how epic would it be to see the Sharks, of course, you know, playing some of the, uh, the top yeah. teams in, uh, in, in, in Europe, or well, all of the teams, of course. But you know what, sorry guys, I said we were going to end up, but I like talking about this because I find it fascinating. Yeah. Um, 
chatting to recently a guy who um, plays rugby in England, but it's the whole promotion relegation thing. So every weekend you flip and play because you, we've got to win this game. Yeah, it's sort of, well, you've come six. And that's it. Cool. Carry on. You know, it's true. You just say, I think Super Rugby actually did kill the, the Curry Cup, but I mean, that is what it is. But I think that promotion and relegation thing, really, it almost stimulates you to say, right, guys, we can, we've got to do something now. We're going to play hard as we can. We don't want to be relegated. And I think that also just brings the crowds. So that makes rugby exciting, man. That could, that could be something. But yeah, it's just, here I am. And here I, just... <laughs> I think the thing is that the, the sort of four top tier guys are, they too strong to almost get relegated. So you have... Yeah. You know, the guys who are in the second and uh, first and second tier, it's quite hard for them. So when they do, I think there is some something there, whether it's the Pumas or the Falca and that, to come up and gone down. And it's hard for them to, to grow because they, they, yeah. they don't have the money. They get yeah. the players coached. I mean, even the Free State, which or the, um, the, the Cheetahs and that, uh, they just get all their players poached by, you know, the sharks and stuff anyway. And, uh, and that's how they stay strong. So you, you poach yeah. them and they can't, they can't win game. Well, yeah, so they can't have the money to buy players. So you just keep them at bay. So that's what they do. Yeah. yeah. So, no. so many guys, you run a, an awesome program. Going to be watching you very, very closely. I think you guys are in exciting times, although it may not feel like it. You're definitely on an upward trend and you've put all the right things in place. You've got brilliant people around you. Um, so really, guys, keep doing what you're doing. And I really, I think you guys are onto something fantastic here. So keep at it. Cool. Thanks, Thanks Ryan. very much, Ryan. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Lovely speaking yeah. with you, man. Awesome. That's cool. And yeah, thanks for, I think, um, you know, there's, there's, like, we, there's the competitive side that we spoke about earlier. There's also the social side. You guys have got that perfect mix. And I think that's also encouraging a lot of guys who, man, I just want to play rugby. You know, I just want to go and play rugby without any... Too many A's and graces. And that's what I think is making you guys so successful. So, top stuff. Well done. Cheers, mate. Appreciate Thanks. it. Caps yeah. on its way. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. I love what you're doing. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll catch up like, um, sometime uh, soon. Well, you know what? I, I also have a head. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Do that again. It's, it's, it's not just about the brand. Can we? Can we, can we you'll have to edit that out. So you yeah. <laughs> David, Robbie. Last one, Ryan. All the best, guys. Thanks, man. Take care. We'll chat soon. Chat soon. Chat soon. Bye bye.